20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10. When Apollo 11 was launched in 1969, it was seen around the world as an incredible and unprecedented moment. The rocket ship took three men to the moon. It was one of the great human endeavors of all time, celebrating bravery and vast technical skill. But what would be the step beyond the moon? Three years later, the people at NASA announced their grand vision, a manned voyage to Mars. And they needed a space plane that would pave the way. That machine was on nobody's drawing board. They needed a rocket ship that could push over two million kilograms away from Earth into an orbit 240 kilometers high. They needed a spaceship that could maneuver up there and sustain its crew for weeks in the hostile environment of space. We're back with you visually looking through camera alpha. Roger. They needed it to be able to survive a fiery re-entry into the atmosphere and then glide home safely and intact. Main gear touchdown. And they wanted this craft to be reusable, to return to space again and again. They needed the space shuttle. Never before had science and technology come together to develop something so amazingly complex. Never before had men and women created anything even remotely like the space shuttle. It's really hard to believe that a shuttle launch is a man-made event. The, the flame and the exhaust plume is so bright, it's like looking into the sun. The power of the engines creates a, a vibration and the shaking of the earth. When a ship takes you into that environment and takes that good care of you and brings you back home in great shape, it's more than just uh, Anchor metal and bolts. It is such a tremendous amount of energy, yet the, the limits within which it must fly are very, very narrow. So you've got something that's powerful, but delicate at the same time. A fleet of these machines has flown more than 520 million kilometers in Earth orbit, placing an incredible 9,000 tons of satellites and communications equipment into space. 230 astronauts have made this journey, all televised, and they seem so completely familiar that the thrill and real danger of space exploration is almost forgotten. But in fact, there is much about the space shuttle that we do not know at all. We've become accustomed to seeing the shuttle up there, seemingly suspended, hardly moving. Yet the astronauts are traveling around the Earth at 29,000 kilometers an hour. And as they go about their work, they can glance up at 16 sunrises in a single day. There are four orbiters in the NASA fleet, Columbia, Discovery, Endeavour, and Atlantis. 
Beneath the shining bright skin of the orbiter is an astonishingly compact and ingenious world. Up front on the top level is the flight deck, the bridge of the ship. And if Captain Kirk were aboard, this is where he'd be. Here are the flight controls for maneuvering in space and for landing the ship later, like an aeroplane. The computer consoles hold programs unique to each mission. On the mid-deck, the crew eats and sleeps and relaxes when there's a moment to relax. Below deck is where they put their stuff. Most importantly, the lithium hydroxide canisters, which filter carbon dioxide from the air. The airlock leads from mid-deck into the cargo bay. It's from here that the astronauts suit up before they step out into the payload bay to go to work. At the rear, you'll find three huge engines that help lift the machine into orbit and two engines that let it maneuver once it's up there. The shuttle's historic design triumph is its ability to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, intact from orbit to Earth, in 45 minutes. Columbia, Houston, the winds at Edwards remain light on runway 22 right now. They're 204 at 11 knots. Forecast winds remain unchanged. Those are within limits. You have a go for the burn. Roger, go for the burn. To break out of orbit, the shuttle must allow gravity's steady pull to take over. Once the ship is turned around, the pilot fires the orbital maneuvering engines in a powerful burst. Slowing, the shuttle drops into low orbit. Now the crew has just 30 minutes before they encounter a wall of fire. When you hit the Earth's atmosphere, you're doing Mach 25, or about 18,000 miles an hour. And, and the way you slow down is by pancaking, or sort of speed breaking the orbiter into the Earth's atmosphere. The, what that does, though, is generate a tremendous amount of heat. Five, five seconds. Three, two, one. At 122,000 meters, the orbiter hurtles into Earth's atmosphere. The nose cone and leading edges are quickly glowing at temperatures hotter than molten lava. As the ship screams down into the thicker atmosphere, it collides with trillions of tiny gas molecules, striking them so hard it creates a glowing ionized plasma that swirls around the shuttle. And I can see the plasma just building and collapsing in a bright white flash down the middle of the vehicle. This plasma is crazy. Uh, it's like little pieces of vehicle flying off in front of us there. In 15 minutes, the shuttle emerges from its fiery cocoon. On the last leg of its journey, it is falling home. 1.2 Gs, folks. Descending through 76,000 feet at 270 indicated. At 30,000 meters, air data probes are deployed to measure airspeed. When subsonic speeds are reached at about 15,000 meters, the shuttle pilot takes manual control and has five minutes to land an unpowered vehicle coming in at almost the speed of sound. Any astronaut qualifying to pilot the shuttle must log hundreds of hours in various training aircraft. Shuttle veteran Eileen Collins is the first woman to have done just that. And now, with over a thousand practice approaches under her belt, she is qualified to become commander on shuttle mission STS-93. Tower NASA 913, after this pattern, we'll be requesting departure to the local area. The shuttle is a difficult aircraft to fly, especially having flown military aircraft or other civilian aircraft. It doesn't have engines when it comes back to Earth. It has a, a very, what we call, high wing loading. Um, it has the short, stubby wings, and uh, I guess you could say it is a, a low lift-to-drag ratio. Um, it sinks like a brick. Without engines, gravity gives the pilot only one chance to get it right. So the moment is rehearsed again and again in a special Gulfstream jet. <laughs> 